you may have seen him on the Tonight Show. He recently did not win the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, nice round of applause for Mr. Franklin Agile. That's true. I didn't win yesterday. I was pretty fucking pissed. I was. I was on the short list. A lot of you didn't know that, but I knew. Anyway, I stopped a couple fights just last week. I wish I'd let them, I'd let them fight, man. You know, but I thought I was going to win, man. Ah, uh, life is, uh, we're in some interesting times. You know, I think the economy's getting worse. You know, I saw my first uh, Asian homeless guy the other day. <laughs> Standing by the freeway with a sign, boy. I, I said, oh, I don't like the looks of that. <laughs> it's the neatest fucking sign I've ever seen, too. <laughs> <laughs> it was exquisite. The handwriting was exquisite. Man. And it said, we'll do math and science for food. <laughs> You know, all the drivers were calling out these very complicated problems and formulas to him. <laughs> but he was doing pretty good. I got to give him that. He knew his shit. <laughs> I said, fuck, man, I'm going to give you an A in homeless. You know? <laughs> They're raising the bar. I'd say, can I do you winch? I said, no, nah, motherfucker, tell me about the theory of relativity, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the window squeegee in days don't do it anymore. Yeah. You now your people say, you know, look, I mean, they, they are obsessed on television with this, uh, the economy, and they make you feel worse, and they just every day they interview somebody else whose life is fucked up, you know what I mean? And that's it, you know, and people say some bizarre things, you know, to, about how it's affecting them. They asked this woman the other day, they said, how is this economy uh, uh, forcing you to cut back? She said, well, I've just recently started buying uh, the scratchy toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went, wow. <laughs> really, how soft is her ass? <laughs> because I didn't even know they made a scratchy toilet paper myself. You know, how does that company stay in business? You know, what's their slogan? Sure, it's scratchy, but hey, it's just your ass. <laughs> tough toilet paper for tough times. You know, hey, it's just your ass toilet paper. <laughs> you know, yeah, it would work. It would work. Oh, they actually ran, you know, Cuba has just announced that they are, yeah, they're getting ready to run out of toilet paper. <laughs> this embargo is finally taking hold. <laughs> We've got them down to the last rows of toilet paper. Turn the screws. <laughs> When they can't wipe their ass, they'll talk. <laughs> Fucking uh, Russia actually ran out during the Yeltsin years. That's true, you know. Yeltsin, by the way, was the uh, world's first openly drunk president of uh, <laughs> But I don't blame him, man, because their economy was fucked up when they were making the transition from uh, communism to uh, capitalism. You know, they actually ran out of toilet paper for a time, you know. And I tell you, you know, that's tough to keep your, your, your people's trust in the government, you know, when you, you run out of toilet paper, you know. It's, it's pretty basic, you know. You know. And you have to tell the people that this is happening. You, know, you can't just say, ah, oh, fuck it, maybe they'll never notice. <laughs> You 
You know, how did he tell them? Comrades, tonight I got, I got the good news and I got a little bad news. The bad news is, as some of you have noticed, the country is out of toilet paper. <laughs> However, the good news is that we are also out of food. <laughs> We're always thinking ahead. <laughs> it's kind of a wash. It's kind of a wash. Yeah, they had some tough times under Yeltsin, you know, which is why he was drunk and dancing all the time. I was, uh, I remember wa I was watching the BBC and I remember I was watching a reporter talking about Russia and they said, in Russia, during that time, there are people in Russia who haven't been paid at their jobs in 10 months. And I was listening, I went, well, why are they still going to this job? <laughs> <laughs> what is the point? <laughs> I just, that was, that's what got me. Yeah, baby, got to go to work where I don't fucking get paid today. <laughs> don't want to be late. actually had bosses that had the nerve to be assholes during this time. You know, Cat would say, Vasily, you are five minutes late. Don't think you can just walk in here anytime you want just because we are not paying you. <laughs> there are plenty of people who want that job. Some people who haven't been paid in two years. <laughs> Getting this job would be like an automatic raise to them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Had some Jehovah's Witnesses come by my pad the other day. You know, which, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I, I used to actually invite them in, you know, listen to them, watch, read the little watchtower. Now, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not quite as patient as I used to be. You know, I just kind of cut to the chase, you know. You know, they knock on the door, I go, I say, who is it? Jehovah's Witness. I just open the door and say, hey, I don't want to go to heaven. And then I just shut the door. <laughs> you know, that's all it's about. That usually stuns them, though. They knock. They say, are you sure? I say, are, are, you, are you all going to be there? They say, oh, yeah. I said, no, that's okay. I'll pass. <laughs> hey, my time is up. And so let, let me uh, get you ready for the next, uh, our next comedian, who is uh, quite a tennis player.